63 years of independence, 63 years of promises, 63 years of patience. It's time for Governance Now. Governance Now. Let's make it work. So the this entire you know, pollution between acquiring land for private purpose and the public purpose came to a head in a very, very famous case called the Kilo vs. City of London. Kilo was a private lumber whose land was acquired by the city of East London, it's a, it's a small city in Connecticut, I think, for putting up some uh, factory for Pfizer. The, uh, the acquiring authority, which is the municipality of whatever it is there, said that, look, we are acquiring this land not just for Pfizer's balance sheet alone. We are acquiring this land because our economic wealth will come to the area, to the state, to the province and the country which will now flow back into the community, so it's a basically a public purpose. The entire debate in the Western world about acquiring land for private and public purpose is neatly you know, exemplified in this case of Kilo, which is why I thought I'd confine myself to this. The Kilo case went to the... Uh, in, in, in the US, every state has got a Supreme Court, and it has also Supreme Court in, the, in Washington. So the state Supreme Court ruled in favor of the local municipality, accepting the argument that I'll just read out what they said. It will provide appreciable benefits to the community, including but not limited to new jobs and increased tax revenue. This created a huge glory all over the US. I don't know whether some of you must be familiar with the Kilo case, if you are with that law. There was a huge national debate in the whole of the US, where the whole country was driven in two factions. Some people said that you can't do it. America is a country where they fiercely guard your personal property and your personal freedom, right to property. You can bear arms and right to your property. You know, this is one country in the world. Somebody trespasses into your property, you can shoot it. That faction on one side and the other faction which said, no, no, you can't stop acquiring land for things like Moscow and Pfizer, otherwise the country will come to a halt and so on. Finally, the US Supreme Court ruled that you can use eminent domain power if this economic project creates new jobs, increases tax and other city revenues, and revitalizes a repressed area. You can think of this in the context of Moscow and Milan and so on. There is a famous, the US Supreme Court, as you know, has not one judge, there are each bench has got three or four judges. There is a famous uh, lady judge called Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. She's one of the most famous judges. So she retired at the age of 90 or something recently. She had a famous dissenting opinion to it, which I think you should listen to in the context of the things which are happening in newspapers. Any property may now be taken for the benefit of another private party, but the fallout from this decision will not be random. The beneficiaries are likely to be those citizens with disproportionate influence and power in the political process, including large corporations and development firms. Such a decision to acquire land for a corporation he raises the distinction between private and public use of property and effectively deletes the words public use from the takings clause of the Fifth Amendment. A vague promise of new jobs and increased tax revenue is not sufficient by itself to acquire land. She called it what is called the reverse Robin Hood, acquiring land from the poor to make wealth for the rich. The reverse Robin Hood dissenting judgment of standard economics is the other side of the, side of the opinion. So this is where the judicial process came to a halt because there is no higher authority than the U.S. Supreme Court. But look at this. In a so-called capitalist society, capitalist society like the United States of America, it's created so much of furore that President George Bush in 2006 came out with an executive order which reversed the clock back completely. He said land can be acquired by the federal government 
only for benefiting the general public and not merely for the purpose of advancing the economic interest of private parties to give, to, to give an ownership or use of the property. The entire effect of the Supreme Court ruling was reversed by this executive order that was in the United States. So the point I wanted to make is that even in a so-called you know, capitalistic society where wealth is worship and where you know, the Wall Street rules over High Street or Washington, the Land Acquisition Act has been circumscribed to only uh, benefit what the whole public wants in terms of sovereign functions and not for private industry. Of course, then, being a pragmatic society, then we all other solutions for acquiring land. I won't go into all that. Which, even now, we are thinking about. Uh, the, as you also know, I should have mentioned this earlier. The old Act of 100 years old is now getting to, going to be amended. The last UPA government was supposed to go through Parliament. They couldn't find time for it. The new Act is going to come out. And only one of the salient features of the Act is that, uh, uh, you know, for industry, if you want to acquire land, 80 percent of the land has to be first bought by the private developer and government acquisition systems will come in only for the balance rate, whether 70, 30, 20 is not yet known, along with a more modern R&R policy. So that is, that is in the offing. So in this whole debate in this country uh, about you know, whether it's required time for industry or not, I think it would be good to look at the US example and keep it in mind. Of course, in India, now what has happened is because the LA Act is so loose and amorphous, all kinds of private purposes are getting loaded on. Today I was reading about the Indian government where they are putting up this uh, upper uh, Ganga canal between Delhi and Roti. And one of the, one of the models they are taking off to make the project viable is to acquire more land than is required and to uh, keep a portion of the land for private commercial and residential development and to build out the whole thing on a on the basis of the minimum extent of land the developer is going to use for putting up flats and office buildings. So basically you are acquiring some poor farmer's land and giving it to a rich developer to put up flats over it. So this is the kind of, uh, you know, I am not saying it's a good thing or bad thing, but this is the kind of uh, economic uh, freedoms available to us as a result of the outdatedness of the LA Act. I mentioned this, you know, the compensation issues in, in India are decided in a very mechanistic fashion. Uh, what Mr. Srivastava was mentioning, especially in the mining industry, this 26 percent thing, which is really a you know, very forward looking piece of legislation. The finance ministry, Mandarins, will say it's a distorted tax. I'm not getting the debate, but it's something that has happened, of course, a lot of the pain on account of land uh, appropriation will ease. So I don't know how the debate is going to pan out and how it's going to come in effect. So basically, one question is how do you the days when you act, the, when the king acquired the land from the vassal for the state are over. You know, you have to have a partnership. How do you structure this partnership? How do you how do you ensure that the chap who gives away the land does it willingly, freely, with his own you know, from his own heart? That is the whole debate. A lot of these solutions like 27 percent, 80, 20 are being thought about giving jobs, X number of jobs to the people, and giving them stakes in the company are thought about how this Debate pans out in the next two three years will define the fate of the Indian the industry and how it's going to take its place as number two or number three, number four in the years to come. In my view, this is the most single most important uh, factor affecting senior investment in India, and uh, it will be good as citizens and as people interested in the mining and mineral sector to give it some thought. Thank you.